Hi, Grade Nines. And so uh, this is outcome number three, part two. So uh, we're going to continue. And there's going to be a little bit more uh, doing in this one. So uh, this will be a slightly longer video so you have a complete explanation how to do this. Okay, so uh, we're looking at classifying elements. And we already know some of this. We already know that every element has its own name, like C is for carbon, O is for oxygen, Na is for sodium, uh, Li is for lithium. Okay, and in the old days, they used to use uh, their own sort of uh, symbols to, to use this, probably a leftover from the alchemists who want, didn't want people to follow their work. Today, we use letters. Okay, and capital always indicates the start of a new element. So Fe goes together because it's a capital F with a little E. When we hit the next capital, it's a new element. So Z, but the N goes with it. Okay, so why do scientists do this? So that every time, so that you don't get confused like you don't think capital C if you just say CO it could be cobalt but it could also be carbon monoxide okay so by going capital C little o we know it's cobalt okay so a little bit about the symbols you do not need to memorize the symbols you will get a periodic table for every test for the rest of your life okay uh, there's no need to memor memorize them uh, I would normally play a song for you here but it's a copyrighted song so I can't play it on my YouTube video because then I get in trouble. Okay, now some elements actually occur as diatomics, and you're probably thinking to yourself, diatomic, di means two, atomic means atom, diatomic means two atoms. Mr. Tierra, that's a whole bunch of Hubbardfinkel, and I would agree with you. So here is the model for hydrogen. No, you can't see that with all the white. Maybe on the back. Oh, there it gets my shirt. That's H2. Hydrogen does not exist. It's impossible as one atom by itself. The formula for chlorine is Cl2. So the chlorine always exists as a double. And I have one more model, I believe. I have oxygen, right, with the double bonds. Oxygen is always O2. So here's the Hubbardfinkels, right? H2O2, Br2, Fi2, F2, I2, N2, Cl2, also P4 and S8. Those are elements that are more stable if they uh, form uh, with multiple atoms join together. Now, technically that's grade 10 material, but it's always nice to see it a little bit in advance, okay? And so here are some, uh, use your periodic table, I'll write down the symbol for these, so these are kind of easy. So using your periodic table, uh, you look up hydrogen is H, argon is capital A, little r, Einsteinium is capital E, S, silicon is S, little i, copper is capital C, little u, potassium is just k, phosphorus is just p, and carbon is just c. So every element has its own special symbol. And these are, of course, all pure substances like we learned earlier in the year. Okay, and then, and it's just too big for this. Uh, topic five looks at the periodic table. Okay, and scientists created a classification system that would organize the elements that they discovered. Let's move it up a little bit, right? And of course, as you're watching these videos, if you're watching from home, you could just pause the video and fill in the blanks as they're up here. I'm not putting the whole screen up at once because I'm now into the chemistry part where I need to do some explanations along with it, okay? Dalton tried to organize periox by atomic mass. It didn't work. Dimitri Mendeleev later on, the uh, youngest of 17 children, Organize them by atomic number, and this time it did work, and they were able to make predictions with it as well. So there's a picture of him, once again, classic chemist, giant forehead. And he arranged the elements in order of increasing atomic number, and he found that every eighth element had properties similar to the first. Now here in your notes is where I got rid of all this. I, I copied some stuff out of the book. It was wrong. I'm sorry. So don't, you can write all that stuff out. Well, you should, though, do those notes that... Lithium, potassium, sodium all behave the same way. That's atomic number 3, 11, and 19. And I've got my periodic table here. I'll notice, you'll notice there's one side, periodic table of elements. Whoops. But then there's also another side, periodic table of ions. So for now, periodic table of elements is the one we're going to use. And you should have gotten one of these from... Uh, me in class, you know what, I'll probably just scan it and put it on Google Classroom as well because it's really important to have one of those available to you at all times. And if you ever forget your periodic table uh, and you're working at home, there's like a million of them online that you could access. Even uh, 
there's one in the online uh, textbook. Okay, and so Mendeley did not have all the information when he created his table, so he left blanks for them. And as people discovered uh, elements, they slotted them in. But he didn't just leave blanks, he also predicted uh, how many protons, neutrons, electrons it would have, and he also predicted uh, what form it would be in and where you would likely be to find it. So it's a great model and a great prediction. And of course, here we go. These are all metals on this side. These are non-metals lying in staircases and metalloids. I did talk about the staircase, but I wasn't able to show it to you last day. There is, it's hard to do it on this side. There we go. There, there is the staircase of lines. So everything on this side are metals. Everything on this side are non-metals. Lying in the staircase are the metalloids. And a quick reminder, francium, as you get closer to the bottom on the left, the metals become more reactive. And as you go higher and to the right, the non-metals become more reactive and fluorine is the most reactive one. This last column, just a reminder, are the uh, noble gases. Noble gases don't react with anything at all. And you should have one of these with you every day now from, from now on while you do chemistry because you'll actually need it. There we go. Okay, and so we're going to look at chemical families. Okay, the term used to describe a group of related elements. Now, in a chemical family, just so you know, you have your periodic table. If I did a quick sketch and your periodic table, it goes like this and then back up like that, right? There's your staircase line that separates it. Families go this way. And then going this way is periods. Okay, so if they be if they're in the same family, they behave the same way. If they're, they're in the same period, they have the same number of electron shells, which you don't know what that means yet, but you're about to find out right now. All right, so the first group is the alkali metals. They're in group one. So grab your periodic table. They're the one in this one. Group one, group two is there. This side is group eight or 18, seven or 17, six or 16. So we're looking at group one. Everything in group one behaves the same way. So it says list all the alkali metals and they're extremely reactive. So I'm gonna move this up. Okay, so I'm just going from my periodic table and I'm gonna write them down. So list all of them. So I have hydrogen, and then lithium, and then sodium, and then potassium, rubidium, calcium, francium. They're all in the first group. They're all over here. Okay. Now, I also need to show you how to draw atoms. And so, uh, once you get the hang of drawing the first four or five, they're very easy after that. So, First thing that happens is inside here, there's my nucleus. So I said we're going to draw sodium, right? So if you look up sodium, there is two numbers that you need to be concerned about. It's the atomic number and the atomic mass. So atomic number for sodium is 11, and the mass is 22.99. Let's call that 23 and 11. So the 11 tells you there's 11 protons. 11 protons means that there's 11 electrons. Uh, atoms don't have charges unless they're ions. And so in this case, protons and electrons are the same. That makes it easy. Electrons are so small, remember from the last, year, last lesson, uh, they almost have no mass. And so most of the mass is protons and neutrons. It takes 10,000 electrons to equal the mass of one proton. And the biggest element we have has like 120 electrons. So really, we don't bother counting it in our calculation at all. So what does that mean? Well, if 23 is the mass and 11 of them is protons, 23 minus 11 will tell you that there's 12 neutrons. Now, we know from the last unit, uh, protons and neutrons are in the nucleus. So I'm just going to write down the symbol, Na, and there is uh, 12 neutrons and 11 protons. So there we go, that part's done. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to place the electrons. So I'm gonna go with a different color for this. So, electrons exist in shells. You've probably seen pictures of them uh, all over the place uh, on the internet like that. Now, 
how many, the first shell is very small. So the first shell can hold two electrons maximum. The second shell is bigger. It can hold up to eight electrons maximum. The third shell is also pretty big. It can hold up to eight electrons maximum, okay? The rest of them you're not responsible for, but if you wanted to know, the next shell holds 16 electrons, and then the shell after that, I think, holds 16 electrons. Uh, again, no, 36. Sorry, periodic table right here. Next shell holds 18 electrons. Sorry, this holds 18 electrons. The next shell holds 18 electrons. The next shell is bigger. It can hold up to 32 electrons, 32 electrons maximum. Max, max. That's the fourth shell. This is the fifth shell. There is a sixth shell. You are not responsible beyond the third shell. Okay. In fact, when they give you a periodic table, they will give you a periodic table that's only partial. It'll only go up to number 20. Okay. And so you're not responsible for that. However, I, I'm treating you like more like grade nine and a half, closer to grade 10. And so I'm just giving you all the information. So I have 11 electrons to place, right? So I can put two electrons in the first shell. So I just make a note there. And then after I place two, the second shell can hold eight. I had 11. I can still pour eight electrons in my second shell. And my third shell uh, can hold eight, but I only have one electron left. Now I'm ready to draw these in. So in my first shell, one, two electrons. My second shell, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons. And finally, my last shell has only one electron. You have to fill it in the first shell before you go to the next one. So once again, sodium atomic number 11 means there's 11 protons. 23 minus 11 means there's 12 neutrons. There's 12 neutrons, that's the nucleus. Because there's 11 protons, there's 11 electrons to place. The first shell can hold eight, so I put two there. The second, so first shell can hold two. Second shell can hold eight, so two plus eight is 10. I have 11 to place, so the last shell holds one. By the time we do four examples, you'll have this down perfectly. Let's go on to the next one. Alkali earth metals. So the first thing we have to do is we have to list all the alkali earth metals. I'm gonna go with purple this time. So that's in group two. These react fairly well, not as well as uh, group one. And we actually, we already know that, right? As we go this way, the metals become more reactive, and as we go down, they become more reactive. We learned that a couple of lessons ago. So I'm going to list all the alkali earth metals. By the way, that's alkaline earth metals. Spelling mistake on my part, sorry. So the first one is BE, and then magnesium, MG, and then calcium, and then strontium, and then barium, and then radium. Okay, so there's all. They're in group two. Okay, and so. We're going to draw magnesium, so I need to look up my stuff for magnesium. So magnesium, Mg, my numbers are 24.31, we'll call that 24. My atomic number is 12, so that tells me there's 12 protons. That also tells me there's 12 electrons. And then subtract those two to tell me that there is, you know, 24 minus 12, there's 12 neutrons. So let's go ahead and draw this. So magnesium, Mg, right? 12 protons, 12 P plus, 12 neutrons, 12 no's. Okay, now I gotta place 12 electrons, right? So first shell can hold two, second shell can hold eight, so I'm up to 10. Now I only have two left for my third shell. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw that in. So uh, one, two. Next shell can hold eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Last shell can hold two. There's magnesium. Next group is the noble gases. That's way over on the right side of the chart. Noble gases don't react with anything. Let's go brown. Okay, they're using like light bulbs and neon type signs. Uh, they're used as coolants in, in, uh, uh, in high-end uh, electronics works. 
as well as you also use in nuclear physics. Okay, and so they're all on the right side. They what they have in common? They don't react with anything. And so the first one is helium. So I'm just going to write them down here. We got helium, and then below that we have neon, and we have argon, we have krypton, we have xenon, we have radon. Okay, and so uh, it says draw neon. So I need my numbers for neon. N E. And so look at neon. I've got a mass of 20. And atomic number 10. Okay, so that means 10 protons, which means 10 electrons. And then we go 20 minus 10 to give me 10 neutrons. I'm going to draw my atom here. Okay, so go. neon, 10 protons, P plus, 10 neutrons. Now I got to place 10 electrons. Well, two electrons in the first shell. Good. The second shell can hold eight electrons. Hey, and look, two and eight, ten. I've got that done perfect. Two, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Here's why elements react. Elements will react so that their last shell can be full. This one, the last shell is full, so it doesn't react with anything. Magnesium has two electrons in its last shell. So the question is, is it easier to pick up six or to throw two away? It's easier to throw two away, it becomes Mg2+. Take your periodic table and look on the ion side, you'll see it says Mg2+. Not only that, everything in that row is Mg2+. Sodium, to become happy, has to give away, either has to pick up eight electrons or give away one. It's easier to give one electron away. So if you look in your periodic table, everything in... The first one forms a one plus. Everything in group two forms a two plus. No elements in the last row form charges because they don't react with anything. In order for something to react, it has to take in or give up electrons. All right, let's go to our, our next one, the halogens. Okay, very reactive non-metals found in group seven or 17. Fluorine is one of them. Uh, let's go ahead and list them. I'm gonna go with orange this time. Going to my periodic table of elements. So I've got fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and acetine. Okay, and it says it wants me to draw fluorine. So I need fluorine. My numbers are for fluorine. Oops, sorry, wrong side. Fluorine says nine, atomic number 19 mass. So remember, that means that there's nine protons. It also means there's nine electrons. And then 19 minus nine. This time I've got 10 neutrons. So the neutrons kind of act like insulation between the protons. So your number of neutrons and your number of protons should be relatively close. Your number of protons and electrons should be exactly the same. Let's go ahead and draw what fluorine would look like. So we need my nucleus, fluorine. And uh, so there we go. And there's nine protons and there's 10 neutrons. So I'll put those in. I got to place nine electrons. Well, the first shell holds two electrons. The second shell can hold eight, but I'm going to run out of atoms, out of electrons. I only have seven. So two in the first shell, seven in the second shell. In order for this to fill its shell, it either has to throw away seven or pick up one. It's easy to pick up one, much easier. So it's going to pick up an extra electron. And remember, electrons have negative charge. That means it should form a one minus ion. You can look on here. One minus, and everything in the same family forms a one minus charge. All right, so the question is, all right, fine. It has to pick up an electron. Where is it going to pick it up from? Well, sodium would have to give up one electron, become happy. Fluorine, we need to take one in. So you put them together, sodium gives up its electron, becomes stable. Fluorine takes in that electron, becomes stable, and you form sodium fluoride, which is more stable than sodium or fluorine alone. Okay, and let's go ahead. Uh, we're not going to do the lab. Anytime, computer. Uh Let's draw another atom just so we be sure you've got this down right. Which one can we draw? 
Oh, let's draw beryllium. Maybe I'll go to blue. Let's draw beryllium. Okay, so first thing you need to do is look at BE. It's at atomic number four here on the left side of the chart. Atomic number is four. Its mass number is 9.01. We'll call it nine. So the four tells me there's four protons. That tells me there's four electrons. And then nine minus four tells me there's five neutrons. And remember, in the nucleus, protons and neutrons. So I'll go ahead and draw my nucleus here. Put BE e in there, the symbol. And there's got to be uh, four protons for four P plus and five neutrons for five no's. Now I've got to place four electrons in this. Remember, the first shell is small. It can hold two electrons. And then the second shell can hold eight, but after I place two, I only have two electrons left. So this is what beryllium would look like. Two electrons in the first shell, two electrons in the second shell. And technically, they're spaced out as far as they can because minus and minus would repel each other. You now know about the families. You also now know about how to figure out protons, neutrons, electrons, and you now know how to draw the atoms as well. We have time to do one more, I suppose. So let's do one more. So that was beryllium. Yeah, that wasn't in the notes. I just picked something out of there. Let's do a non-metal of interest. The one that's not too bad. No, that's long. Mm. Oh, chlorine. Chlorine would be a tough one. Let's try this. Draw a chlorine atom. So it's Cl. Let me look up my numbers. Chlorine is 17, and it's 35.45, so we're going to round that down to just 35. So the 17 tells me i got to place 17 protons. This is going to be a big atom. 17 protons means there's also 17 electrons, and then 35 minus 17 gives me 18 neutrons to place, 18 neutrons. So let's get, I draw my atom. And it's fluorine, and it's got 17, no, it's chlorine. Chlorine, chlorine, back to drawing. Sorry, my next class is coming up a little fast, so I'm starting to get a little distracted. Chlorine uh, has 17 protons, has 18 neutrons. I now got to place 17 electrons. Well, the first shell I know can hold two, okay? I got 15 left. The second shell can hold eight electrons. I got seven left. The third shell can hold eight, but now I'm down to seven electrons. And there it is. That is how you have to place them. So the first shell, two electrons, one, two. Second shell, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons. Last shell, seven electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is it stable? No. In order to be stable, you have to give up seven electrons or pick up one. Easier to pick up one. If chlorine picks up an extra electron that had no charge before, now it has an extra minus in it. The charge on it is minus one. And that's actually a fairly long lesson. So you now know how to figure out protons, neutrons, electrons. You know how to draw atoms. You also looked at the families. You looked at the periodic table. So we're going to stop that. That's a long lesson, 23 minutes. And then uh, I will continue next day.